So if you don't mind, I better stay down here. Um, typically, some of the work I do outside of the country is behind closed doors, not in front of audiences, so um, and unscripted. This time, I thought it important to uh, jot it down and read from it. I only put this together on the flight from Phoenix, so here we go. But so bear with me. This public speaking isn't my forte. That put me in a hot spot anywhere around the world, and I breathe easier. Um, but thank you for the opportunity to share my story from the perspective of a father with two children with language-based neurological indifferences and the struggles associated with their respective conditions. A brief note about my wife and I. My wife works one-on-one -on -one in a self-contained middle school in Phoenix, helping children with a broad spectrum of conditions. She regrets not being able to attend this briefing because of her obligations to her students. As for myself, I'm a business owner, former military, and donate my time advocating to those without a voice around the world uh, on many different fronts. Um, I would assume both of our passions stem from the years of frustration, uh, looking for resources for our boys and others sharing what we've learned and hoping for an expanded dialogue in these matters. Our story is this. We have two sons, ages 24 and 20. At the age of two, our oldest son was diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. Sorry. <clears throat> after four long years of treatment, he won his battle. Shortly after his recovery, it was time to enroll him into school. He progressed through his early years without too many red flags. In the fifth grade, we noticed his struggles and had him tested by a neuropsychologist. He was diagnosed with dyslexia. He struggled in the public schools as they were simply not equipped to accommodate his needs. We sought help in the private sector throughout his middle school years. Our youngest son has dyspraxia. Little understood and certainly not having the exposure like dyslexia, teachers in the clinical community were baffled with his presentation. Simply put, educators were not on board with his diagnosis. His presentation early on was that of a clumsy kid. We jokingly called him Kramer from the sitcom Seinfeld as he would walk into a room and fall on his backside, never getting hurt, thank God. As his education continued and the extent of, the, of his dyspraxia was more evident, we decided to use private sector support, which certainly helped. From an educational standpoint, his abilities were off the charts. With an IQ of over 130, his reading and comprehension at the 99 percentile in the nation, his math, as far as the schools were concerned, was severely lacking, although he arrived at the correct answers but could not show his work on paper. As frustrations continued, we decided to remove math from his public school curriculum and employ private tutors who understood the complex learning of our son. Over the years, we continued to seek alternative support for our boys. They were just getting by, and their conditions often mislabeled, which added to the frustration. Shortly before high school, we found a private school in upstate New York that catered to students with similar indifferences. The Gal School, established in 1926, with 146 students from 23 countries, focuses on a level playing field where students can be given the tools to be successful. The philosophy is a small classroom setting, about four students per classroom. With the school adapting a curriculum based on that student, or those students in that classroom, and relying more on environment than medication. A boarding school was the furthest thing from our mind for a support system, and what, but one that both of our boys chose as a means to address their respective conditions. Our son with dyslexia attended the gal with relative ease. Our son with dyspraxia, on the other hand, absolutely baffled some of the best professors in the field of learning based in differences. His intelligence was undeniable, but his frustration with perfection enabled his progress. In the end, he finished his four years and was offered scholarships to several colleges. Both of our boys continue to use the tools they were taught, but continue to struggle in their college years. My hope is in telling this story, it will shed light on this condition, 
to allocate funding so that the educators and clinicians can be given the support and training to accommodate these students. We owe that to our children who are our future. One last thing, I will close with a short story. Near the end of our son with dyspraxia's freshman year at the Gow School, we were asked if we had read his poems. We were unaware that he had any interest in writing. They said, oh yes, his poetry was sent to the state finals and he was published. <laughs> <laughs> they never said a word. Having the right resources and accommodations will allow individuals with these conditions to flourish. Please consider our story and know that there are many others with similar experiences. His case has been chronicled over the years and would be more than happy to share the expansive neuropsychological exams with you. Thank you.